After studying this module, you shall be able to learn about intergroup relations and intergroup conflict, identify the various theories of intergroup conflict, and understand the ways in which intergroup conflict can be reduced. Intergroup relations refer to how people in groups perceive, think, and feel about and act towards members of other groups. Hence, intergroup relations involve relations between two or more groups and their respective members. Whenever individuals belonging to one group interact collectively or individually with another group or its members, in terms of their group identifications, we have an instance of intergroup behavior. Intergroup conflicts involve conflicts of interests between two or more competing groups. One of the main causes of conflict is the perceived incompatibility of goals where the desires of one group are against the desires of another group. Therefore, in a conflict, groups take aggressive actions toward one another to control outcomes which are important to each side. Theories of intergroup conflict Many theories have been proposed to explain the phenomenon of intergroup conflict. They are as follows. Intergroup conflict as a universal process. According to some theorists, the main cause of conflict is the aggressive drive. They consider conflict to be one of the universal aspects of human behavior. Hence, intergroup conflict prevails in all societies since it is an outcome of the aggressive drive present in all humans. Individual Differences Approach According to this approach, some personality types may be fostered in particular social climates, for instance, the authoritarian personality. According to Adorno and others, intergroup behavior is competitive and ethnocentric. Summer described ethnocentrism as the view of things in which one's own group is the center of everything and all others are rated with reference to it. Each group considers itself superior and looks at other groups with contempt. Adorno and colleagues argued that harsh and manipulative childhood rearing practices induce in people an obsession of status and authority intolerance of uncertainty and hostile attitudes toward weaker people. These people have an authoritarian personality which predisposes them to various forms of intergroup behavior. However, Pettigrew stated that as compared to personality, socialization within a culture of prejudice is a far better predictor of the development of prejudice. However, this perspective is not widely accepted by social psychologists. According to Rokesh, some people have a dogmatic personality that predisposes them to ethnocentrism and prejudice. Sidelius, Prato and their associates propose the social dominance theory. Social dominance theory explains the extent to which people accept or reject societal ideologies that legitimize prejudice and discrimination as compared to those that legitimize equality and fairness. People who desire their own group to be dominant and superior are high in the social dominance orientation. Hence, they reject egalitarian ideologies and support those that legitimize hierarchy and discrimination. Interactionist perspectives, however, focus on the interaction between personality and the social context. Sheriff proposed a realistic conflict or interdependence theory of intergroup relations. According to the realistic conflict theory, intergroup conflict arises as a result of competition among groups for mastery of scarce but valued resources. Realistic group conflict theory 
maintains that intergroup conflicts are rational in the sense that groups do have incompatible goals and are in competition for scarce resources. This assumption of rationality is made with respect to competing groups but it is also used for individual group members since it is assumed that if it is rational for groups to compete, it must also be rational for the individual group members to do so. In 1954, Muzaffar Sharif and his colleagues conducted field studies on intergroup conflict adjacent to Robbers Cave State Park in Oklahoma. In this study, 22 12 year old boys attending summer camp were randomly assigned to two groups. These two groups did not have knowledge of each other's existence. Over time, they became aware of the other group's existence. Then the researchers introduced competitive athletic activities between the groups like tug of war, baseball, etc. This led to derogatory stereotypes and conflict among these groups. Later, they arranged intergroup contact under neutral, non competitive conditions. However, Mere intergroup contact was not sufficient to change the nature of the relations between the groups. Only when the relationship between the groups was changed by introducing series of superordinate goals, the relations between the two groups became more harmonious. According to Sheriff, if two groups value the same goal, but the goal can only be achieved by one group at the expense of the other, the intergroup relations will be competitive and disharmonious. Whereas if two groups have the same goal and the goal can only be achieved if both groups work together, then intergroup relations will be cooperative and harmonious. Hence, this approach to intergroup behavior views conflict as arising in situations where the outgroup threatens the achievement of in-group goals. Even the existence of an outgroup is perceived as a threat to the identity of one's in-group. In the social identity theory, Tatchfeld discussed about the conflict between persons as individuals and persons as members of a group. According to this perspective, social categories act as means for self-reference. People define themselves in terms of membership of social groups and derive their identity from it. The individuals perceive their group positively and also better than other outgroups. According to the social identity perspective, People define and evaluate themselves in terms of the groups to which they belong. For social identity theory, group behaviors like stereotyping, ethnocentrism, in-group favoritism, etc. occur when social identity is the salient basis of self-conceptualization. Social identity processes are cognitively created by social categorization of self and others. Groups are represented as prototypes that describe and prescribe perceptions, thoughts and behaviors which in turn define the in-group and distinguish it from the out-groups. Self-categorization is responsible for conformity, normative behavior and other intergroup behaviors. Social categorization. The very existence of separate categories creates competitive behaviors between groups. Hence, social categorization is the foundation of intergroup relations. According to the social categorization perspective, when people or objects are categorized into groups, actual differences between members of the same category are perceptually minimized or often ignored. Due to categorization, perceptions of similarities within groups and differences between groups are exaggerated. Also, people typically classify themselves 
into one of the social categories and out of the other. Tatchful and Turner further propose that a person's need for positive self-identity may be satisfied by membership in prestigious social groups. Outgroup homogeneity bias. Sorting people into categories creates several other biases in social perception that lead to stereotyping. For instance, the outgroup homogeneity bias is the perception that there is less variability among the members of outgroups than within one's own in-group. We assume that outgroup members are similar to one another while we are aware of the differences among members of our in-group. One reason is that they have less complex conceptualizations of outgroup members. Illusory correlation occurs when a perceiver overestimates the strength of a relationship between two variables. This could be due to the fact that people usually have less contact with outgroup members than in-group members. Social categorization lays the foundation for intergroup bias and conflict. Mere social categorization influences differential thinking feeling and behaving toward in-group and out-group members. People favor in-group members in reward allocations, in esteem and in the evaluation of the products of their labor. Also, the arousal of empathy and pro-social behavior is offered more readily to in-group than to out-group members. People are also more generous and forgiving in their explanations for the behaviors of in-group relative to out-group members. Positive behaviors and successful outcomes are usually attributed to internal, stable characteristics of in-group than out-group members, whereas negative outcomes are more likely to be ascribed to the personalities of out-group members than of in-group members. The finding from experiments on minimal groups showed that as compared to people who are not explicitly categorized, people who are categorized discriminate in favor of their group. They also show in-group bias, feel a sense of belonging to their group and similarity to and liking for their in-group members. Automatic schema activation. Stereotyping of outgroup members may be largely an automatic categorization, contingent process that we have little control over. However, many researches have shown that the process is moderated by many factors. Some researches have shown that if people consciously think about the automatic category, Stereotype link, the process strengthens the link and increases automatic stereotype activation. Accentuation and illusory correlation effects. Social categorization also causes us to accentuate similarities among in-group members and tend to see out-groups as more homogeneous. This happens because we are more familiar with the in-group and therefore have more individuating information about in-group than out-group members. In the illusory correlation effect, people associate distinctive behaviors with distinctive categories. Due to this, people erroneously correlate negative attributes with minority groups. The theory of relative deprivation. The concept of relative deprivation was proposed by Stauffer, Suckman, Devaney, Starr and Williams. The basic premise of the relative deprivation theory is that as compared to the objective situation, the satisfaction of an individual or group is related to the situation relative to other individuals or groups. Dissatisfaction in people occurs because they make an upward comparison. Runciman distinguished between egoistical relative deprivation and fraternal relative deprivation. 
egoistical relative deprivation refer to the effects that emerge because of the comparison between individuals as individuals. Fraternal relative deprivation arises when a comparison is made between one's group and an outgroup. Fraternal deprivation is much more likely to cause intergroup conflict than egoistic deprivation. According to the theory of relative deprivation, disadvantage leads to social action when people come to realize that there is a mismatch between their expectations and attainments. Stereotyping, Prejudice and Discrimination A stereotype is a set of beliefs and expectations about members of a group that is held simply on the basis of their membership in the group. Stereotypes are oversimplifications that we employ in an effort to make sense of the complex social environment in which we live. Stereotypes function as schemes, the cognitive frameworks for perceiving and organizing information. Schemes relating to stereotypes organize and simplify information and provide a framework for prejudiced individuals to view others behavior. Prejudice involves the negative or positive evaluations or judgments of members of a group that are based primarily on membership in a group and not necessarily on the basis of characteristics of individual members. For instance, Prejudice based on race occurs when a person is evaluated mainly on the basis of belonging to a particular race and not because of his or her own specific characteristics or traits. Although prejudice generally involves a negative evaluation of group members, it can also be positive. Though people dislike members of some groups, they positively evaluate members of their own group. In both scenarios, the evaluation is unrelated to qualities of particular members or groups and is based on their membership of a certain group. Pettigrew draws on the fundamental attribution error to explain the ultimate attribution error. The ultimate attribution error is a group level attribution in which people attribute good acts to dispositional factors if performed by an in-group member and to situational factors if performed by an out-group member and vice versa for bad acts. Research conducted in India and Malaysia supports this analysis. The various forms of discrimination include in-group favoritism, name calling, verbal abuse, intergroup violence and genocide. According to Marilyn Brewer, ultimately many forms of discrimination and bias may develop not because outgroups are hated but because positive emotions such as admiration, sympathy and trust are reserved for the in-group. Since attitude behavior research reveals that people's attitude and their behavior do not often correspond, hence Social categorization may be a necessary but not sufficient condition for intergroup discrimination. Social harmony among groups. Many solutions have been proposed to reduce intergroup conflict. They are as follows. Intergroup contact. Close and pleasant interpersonal contact between people from different groups is probably the best way to achieve social harmony, the contact hypothesis. In order to be effective, the contact must be prolonged and cooperative. It should also occur within an official climate that encourages integration and has to be between equal status groups. The importance of intergroup contact was also demonstrated by the Robles Cave study by Sheriff. However, a problem which may arise is that there can be anxiety associated with intergroup contact which can make the interaction aversive. Intergroup anxiety refers to a state in which 
people worry about negative behavioral consequence and evaluations by in-group and out-group in the event of inter-group contact. One way to solve this problem is to encourage people to decategorize themselves and treat each other as unique individuals or to recategorize themselves as members of a superordinate identity which is shared. Implications of social categorization for reducing bias. Three categorization based solutions for reducing bias are decategorization, recategorization and mutual differentiation. The decategorization perspective proposes that if the members of two groups conceive of themselves as separate individuals or have personalized interactions with members of the other group, out-group stereotypes and intergroup bias can be reduced. The revised contact hypothesis states that for contact between groups to be successful, certain prerequisite features must be present. Equal status between the groups, cooperative intergroup interaction, opportunities for self-revealing, personal acquaintance between the members and supportive norms by authorities. These features reduce bias since they lead to decategorization. Decategorization can include friendly interactions in which people relate to one another in terms of their personal interests rather than interests relevant to their respective groups. Also, there are self-other comparisons that replace group on group comparisons as well as self-revealing interactions. In contrast to decategorization, recategorization is designed not to eliminate categorization but rather to structure a definition of group categorization at a higher level of category inclusiveness in ways that reduce intergroup bias and conflict. Recategorization may also involve use of pronouns like us, we and are, which include the memberships of both groups. Arrangement of the memberships in space, like making an arrangement which reduces the salience of separate group boundaries. In group identity model, cooperation among sheriffs, a all groups of summer campers, reduced bias and conflict because intergroup cooperation transformed the boys' perception of themselves from two groups to a more inclusive superordinate identity. Hence, intergroup cooperation plays an important role in facilitating the development of a common superordinate entity. Mutual intergroup differentiation includes maintenance of original boundaries, appreciating the differences between the groups and seeking solutions for collective problems which take into consideration the group boundaries. At Robbers Cave, the introduction of superordinate goals led to a sequence of category-based social processes of decategorization, recategorization and mutual intergroup differentiation. Negotiation or bargaining is one of the most common strategies for resolving conflicts. It is a reciprocal communication in which an attempt is made to reach an agreement in situations in which some interests are shared and some are in opposition. The opposite sides propose offers and concessions. The success of negotiation depends a lot upon the orientation with which the parties have entered into the process. Negotiations can be approached as win-win situations or win-lose situations. Integrative agreements offer greater joint benefits to the parties concerned. Mediation and arbitration. Third party intervention. As compared to direct communication, third party intervention may offer better chances for a solution. Mediators help the opponents focus their discussion on the issues and reach a voluntary agreement. 
In arbitration, the third party has the power to make a decision after hearing the arguments and information of the conflicting parties. Third party intervention has several advantages. First, mediators or arbitrators can arrange details so they don't become sources of conflict. Second, skillful intervention can improve intergroup relationships. Third, mediators may be able to offer more creative integrative solutions. Superordinate goals are shared goals that can be attained only if groups work cooperatively as a team. Intergroup cooperation resolves conflicts because it makes the outgroup a source of rewards rather than punishments. Cooperation helps in increasing the importance of a new in-group and decreasing the importance of group membership in general. Intergroup cooperation leads to true conflict resolution, multi-group membership and individualization of the outgroup. Evidence from anthropological field studies has shown that control of intergroup conflict and hostility can be achieved in tribal societies through crossing the membership of groups so that some individuals belong to one group on the basis of one set of criteria and to another group on the basis of a second criterion. To summarize, Intergroup relations involve relations between two or more groups and their respective members. Intergroup conflicts involve conflicts of interests between two or more competing groups. The main theories of intergroup conflict are intergroup conflict as a universal process, individual differences approach, social identity theory, realistic conflict theory, and relative deprivation theory. Stereotypes refer to widely shared intergroup attitudes that act as social representations of other groups. The ultimate attribution error is a group level attribution in which people attribute good acts to dispositional factors if performed by an in-group member and to situational factors if performed by an out-group member and vice versa for bad acts. Because stigmatized groups know exactly the negative stereotypes that others have of them, they experience stereotype threat. Social harmony among groups can be achieved by intergroup contact, decategorization, recategorization and mutual intergroup differentiation, introduction of superordinate goals, negotiation and multi-group membership. Intergroup relations involve relations between two or more groups and their respective members. It refers to how people in groups perceive, think and feel about and act towards members of other groups. Intergroup conflicts involve conflicts of interest between two or more competing groups. One of the main causes of conflict is the perceived incompatibility of goals where the desires of one group are against the desires of another group. According to some theorists, the main cause of conflict is the aggressive drive. According to the individual differences approach, some personality types may be fostered in particular social climate. According to theorists, Intergroup behavior is competitive and ethnocentric. Sidenius, Prato and the associates propose the social dominance theory which explains the extent to which people accept or reject societal ideologies that legitimize prejudice and discrimination as compared to those that legitimize equality and fairness. Interactionist perspectives focus on the interaction between personality and the social context. Sheriff proposed a realistic conflict or interdependence theory of intergroup relations, according to which 
Group conflict arises as a result of competition among groups for mastery of scarce but valued resources. Sheriff and his colleagues conducted the robber's cave experiment on intergroup conflict. The basic premise of the concept of relative deprivation means that one lacks a desired resource in comparison with another group which is perceived to have more. Dissatisfaction in people occurs because they make an upward comparison. Runciman distinguished between egoistical relative deprivation and fraternal relative deprivation. In the social identity theory, Tachfield discussed about the conflict between persons as individuals and persons as members of a group. According to this perspective, social categories act as means for self-reference. People define themselves in terms of membership of social groups and derive their identity from it. Group behaviors like stereotyping, ethnocentrism, in-group favoritism, etc occur when social identity is the salient basis of self-conceptualization. Social identity processes are cognitively created by social categorization of self and others. The very existence of separate categories creates competitive behaviors between groups. Hence, social categorization is the foundation of intergroup relations. According to the social categorization perspective, when people or objects are categorized into groups, actual differences between members of the same category are perceptually minimized or often ignored. Tatchfell and Turner further propose that a person's need for positive self identity may be satisfied by membership in prestigious social groups. The various systematic biases and other effects of social categorization are outgroup homogeneity bias, automatic schema activation, accentuation and illusory correlation effects. Outgroup homogeneity bias is the perception that there is less variability among the members of outgroups than within one's own in-group. It is social categorization that lays the foundation for intergroup bias and conflict by influencing differential thinking, feeling and behaving toward in-group and out-group members. Stereotyping of outgroup members may be largely an automatic categorization, contingent process that we have little control over. This is known as automatic schema activation. Social categorization also causes us to accentuate similarities among in-group members and tend to see outgroups as more homogeneous. In the illusory correlation effect, people associate distinctive behaviors with distinctive categories. Due to this, people erroneously correlate negative attributes with minority groups. The theories of intergroup conflict can be grouped as shown in the diagram.
A stereotype is a set of beliefs and expectations about members of a group held on the basis of membership in that group. Stereotypes function as schemas. Prejudice involves the negative or positive evaluations or judgments of members of a group that are based primarily on membership in that group. Discrimination refers to the behavioral manifestation of stereotypes and prejudice indicative of negative or sometimes positive actions towards members of a particular group due to their membership in that group. The various forms of discrimination include in-group favoritism, name-calling, verbal abuse, intergroup violence and genocide. Pettigrew draws on the fundamental attribution error to explain the ultimate attribution error, which is a group-level attribution in which people attribute good acts to dispositional factors if performed by an in-group member and to situational factors if performed by an out-group member and vice versa for bad acts. Some research conducted in India supports the analysis of the ultimate attribution error. Since research reveals that people's attitudes and their behavior do not often correspond, hence social categorization may be a necessary but not sufficient condition for intergroup discrimination. Intergroup relations are mostly associated with differential status, power and resources. Majority groups benefit from this arrangement and hence their members experience a positive sense of identity and esteem. In contrast, minority groups suffer from this arrangement and hence their members may carry a stigma that negatively affects their self-concept. Since stigmatized groups know exactly the negative stereotypes that others have of them, they experience stereotype threat that interferes with and impairs their task performance. The main ways of reducing intergroup conflict are through social categorization like recategorization, decategorization, intergroup contact, negotiation, setting up superordinate goals, and multigroup membership. In this module, we have learned that intergroup relations involve relations between two or more groups and their respective members. Intergroup conflicts involve conflicts of interest between two or more competing groups. The main theories of intergroup conflict are intergroup conflict as a universal process, individual differences approach, social identity theory, Realistic Conflict Theory and Relative Deprivation Theory Stereotypes refer to widely shared intergroup attitudes that act as social representations of other groups. Because stigmatized groups know exactly the negative stereotypes that others have of them, they experience stereotype threat. Social harmony among groups can be achieved by intergroup contact, decategorization, Recategorization and mutual intergroup differentiation, introduction of superordinate goals, negotiation, and multigroup membership.